literal thank you so much for joining us here on the honor cross arms podcast today i'm going to do things a little bit differently today it's going to be me and me only but i think you'll still enjoy it all the better so today's going to be just a little bit of an update in some of the news that's flying around the world right now and i think you all know that uh this is the covid everybody's at home we're all in this together we know that but i'm gonna, I'm gonna try to lighten that load a little bit. We're going to talk about some of the news things that are going on. They're not being talked about at this point in time. And there's a really great article that came out from Task and Purpose over the weekend, and it really talks about what the Navy wants to do with the EOD text that they've got and how they're going to bring kind of pro sports into the mix along with really great technology uh, that's that's going to be started to be implemented into their training programs. And what their whole objective is, is to make a human weapon system. Now, I want you all to think about that for just a moment. What does that mean? What does a human weapon system mean to us as human beings, right? We're not supposed to be uh, robots. We're not supposed to be these people who can do things uh, uh, over and over again and not get uh, inundated with the mundane. We have to have some sort of breaks and things. We're not robots, but the Navy EOD training schools are actually going to try to kind of make us a little bit of a robot, but they're going to do it with some really interesting ways that I'm going to talk about today. So the Navy's adding a couple of cognitive enhancements to their techniques and their trainings. Um, it's going to be a number of different things that they're going to do. First and foremost, what they're going to do is build this huge training facility in Panama City. And I think if any of you all have followed what's happened in in the last year or so, Panama City was absolutely devastated by a hurricane and completely leveled Tyndall Air Force Base. And almost everything around Panama City was leveled, and now they're trying to rebuild it. Well, the military has uh, allocated $2 million to build a 15,000-square-foot tactical operations and performance laboratory. What does that mean? That means that they're really going to try to bring in professionals from different areas, professionals from professional sports, professional sports psychologists. They're going to bring in doctors. They're going to bring in – uh, nutritionists, which is a really different uh, avenue that they're going to approach to, you know, health and wellness in general. We have nutritionists in the military right now, but what we don't do is do a good job of actively involving and engaging those um, nutritionists on a daily level. So what they're going to really focus on from the EOD training scenario is to bring those you know, really the nutritional element really into the actual training regiment of it so that it helps improve performance. They also have something called a kinesiotherapist and also data analysts that are that they're going to bring in too, as well as strength and conditioning specialists. Now, what does all this mean? It means that they're just basically going to take in a pro sports mentality to our Navy EOD training. I think that's a great idea. When you think about the training regiments that some of our pro sports athletes have, I look at the NFL in particular, where they train year round. Major League Baseball does too. They don't play year round, but dad, blame it, they sure do train year round. And that's something that our our Navy EOD, our Special Operations Warfare uh, fighters, they have to do. We as military operators have to stay in shape year round, so we don't get a break. You may get a, a week of leave here, a couple of days off here and there. But you don't you don't get that opportunity to really branch out and take you know a couple of months off at a time. So we've got to start training our our men and women in a better way. And they're going to do all these wonderful new technologically advanced training opportunities and start bringing that into this new two million dollar complex that they're building. The strength and conditioning specialist, I think, is a real big key where you're talking about, you know, 
not only are we talking about lifting weights, but they're actually talking about doing yoga. They're talking about doing stretching elements. They're talking about mind-body wellness. These are all the things that the military is really starting to take a hard, hard look at because they're seeing tons of anecdotal evidence and then even some scientific-based evidence behind you know, the benefits to understanding that mentally you've got to be focused, but also mentally you have to be able to check out every now and then too. They'd only, they don't only want to focus on training war fighters right now and then kicking them off into the sunset, right? What they're trying to do now by taking this new approach is to take care of their war fighters while they're active duty, but then also mitigating the risks that they have issues when they retire or when they get out of the military so that the VA has different sets of skills and abilities to take care of that veteran. And that could be through all the different things that we're talking about now. I've been begging, and I think many of you all in our listening community that are veterans have been begging for years for the VA to get on board with alternative treatment options, um, whether it's yoga, whether it's um, chiropractic care, uh, if it's you know uh, hyperbaric chamber treatment, whatever it may be, that's what we've really got to try to find a good alternative therapy for because, look, we can take pills all day long. But when you really distill it down, the number two cost, only outside direct cost of care to us in the veteran community, the number two cost of the VA is pharmaceutical cost. So if we can reduce that pharmaceutical cost and save the VA money, that's a huge cost-benefit analysis savings point to the VA. And we can do it through alternative treatment options, such as yoga, such as mindfulness, such as meditation, such as stretching, you know, uh, all the things that we're talking about, electro-stem therapy, these wonderful, wonderful different modalities of treatment that are, for the last 40 or 50 years, have not necessarily been treated as, uh, I don't know how to say it and still be PC, but who cares about PC, right? This is the Honor Across Arms podcast. Let's just call a spade a spade. So it wasn't, you know, actively uh, approved in the medical community because they thought it was a holistic approach. It was a witchery, if you will, witchcraft. When we all know that Chinese medicine is 10,000 plus years old and there's so much benefit to our herbs and wellness coming from, you know, meditation and, and uh, martial arts, all those kind of trainings where you, you start training the mind first. So the Navy EOD's approach to taking care of their warfighters and having them set up to be kind of like pro athletes is a different, completely different mindset. Um, And it comes from, it comes from a really great commander, uh, Navy Admiral William uh, Bill. Most of you all know him as McRaven. Uh, He actually commanded the U S special operations command from 2011 to 2014. And he created this thing called this tactical human performance program in 2016, where they wanted to, you know, take on uh, a new training approach, and they built a smaller 5,000 square foot training uh, center for SOCOM. And uh, SOCOM is Special Operations Command, and they really tried to increase the range of options to supercharge human performance. Those are done through a number of different things, whether it's supplements, electro brain stimulation meditation that we mentioned earlier well the navy eod dive community actually wants to try to take on this same approach where socom has been doing it since 2016 why in the world wouldn't the navy eod do this and socom trains just like a professional athlete and i think you'll see the entire military community whether it's coast guard army air force navy marine corps the entire military community is going to start moving towards this more honed in approach to being a, a, an athlete um, where athletes don't just have to be physically fit. They've got to be mentally fit too. That's a big, big, big difference where, you know, most of the time the military tries to train us to be autonomous, uh, you know, war fighters where there's not a whole lot of thinking that goes on. They just want us to react, react, which is great. And that's what we're trained for is to react when under pressure, boom, we uh, take care of things and get things done. Well, now where we're going, and especially when you're talking about EOD and especially some of the underwater training that they have to go through, you actually got to think through this a little bit. So they're taking an approach where they're sitting back and they're going to say, okay, 
yes, we have to react, but first we have to think before we react. And that's a great, great, great opportunity for us to delve ourselves into what does the 21st century warfighter look like versus what does the 20th century warfighter, warfighter look like? So there's a lot of different things that they're doing. They're, they're teaching visual, visualization. Now, what does that mean? That means that as you practice emergency procedures and you go through some of the things in your head that you think could happen during an, uh, an emergency circumstance, you may be thinking through it, but you're thinking through it like a checklist. Well, when you visualize it, you're actually closing your eyes. You're actually walking through it. You're, you're seeing your hands go to the movement, twisting the wrench or cutting the wire or you know, putting the C4 charge on. You're actually physically seeing that in your mind, so you can actually visualize that. That's a big training difference versus uh, just knowing how to react immediately and and um, you know understanding how to visualize something rather than just knowing what it is checklist wise in your head. So I think it's a great approach. I think it'll be a really great enhancement to the Navy EOD's training school and especially great for the Panama City region there in Florida because they're gonna you know build this big training facility and. Navy EOD uh, are going to come in from all around the country because their school is going to be there in Panama City. So it's going to be a great opportunity for us as the military community to give back to the local community as well by bringing, you know, patrons in, which is awesome. Yeah, they're going to be there training, but they're also going to have some time off. So it's really exciting for me to think about what our warfighters look like in the 21st century versus what we look like in the 20th century. And, you know, who knows what we're going to be in the beyond as well because – there's so many things that are on the forefront where now we're developing these suits that are built to be worn where we can actually wear a helmet and use these kind of goggles where we can see the battlefield uh, kind of in an AI environment. You know, there's no telling where we're going to go. I saw an autonomous vehicle the other day that um, is geared to carry packs of our infantry. So they put the, the rucksack, the 80, 100, the 200 pound rucksack on this six wheeled machine that is autonomous that can drive on its own and it follows the, the infantry. So the infantry, the only thing they're doing is carrying their weapon and staying on the lookout. And they don't have to worry about carrying a hundred pound rucksack all the time on them because this, this vehicle is doing it for them. So that's where we're going. And it all starts by taking a more human weapon system approach to our training and our education of our warfighters. And Navy EOD is going to set that standard. So it's pretty interesting. And, and I thought that was a really great article to talk to you all about today and, and just, you know, bring that up because with everything that's going on with the COVID-19 right now, you're not hearing about some of the great advances that are happening, especially in the active duty com component of uh, the, uh, the fighting force. But there's some really neat things that are happening in our veteran community as well. But there's a phenomenally awesome article, and I've been, you know, I, I, I encourage you all to follow along with military.com and, you know, uh, Task and Purpose, uh, whatever outlet that you want to stay up to news, stay up to date on the news that's happening in the veteran and, and active duty community. But there's a great article that I saw a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, man, I've got to share this to our audience because it, it goes back to – you know, as a child growing up, I was born in the 80s, I was born in 80, um, and grew up in the 80s and 90s, and The X-Files was a great show that was on. Um, Mulder and Scully, I think, were their names. It was pretty crazy. Well, now, there's a great article that came out um, because we had some information, some declassified material that's now been released that actually shows UFOs do exist, and UFOs were actually documented by the United States military. Now, I think this is fascinating and phenomenal because when I was growing up in the, in the 90s, UFOs were a huge thing. I mean, everybody thought about it. You had um, Independence Day, which was a great Will Smith movie, and you know it was about aliens coming down and all this, all these things. It was just fascinated us as human beings. Now, I think we're in a little bit different era where now, if 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 it's not the social media era, if it's not, um, you know, some of the things that are happening in reality television, it's not something that we want to watch or pay attention to. Well, I do, and I think a lot of you all do as well. Here on the Honor Across Arms podcast, we bring you the great things that are happening and newsworthy uh, items in our community as well. So what does that mean? The X-Files 
kind of military standpoint and what we did to cover things up 